Sadly, some of the people whose efforts made Star Trek are gone now. Gene Roddenberry, Gene Kuhn, Mark Daniels, who directed more episodes than anyone else, Bill Tice, Mort Werner, Lucille Ball, one of the best of the science fiction writers, Theodore Sturgeon, makeup supervisor, Freddie Phillips, cameraman, Ernie Haller, script consultant, Arthur Singer. We, we shot at uh, uh, the studio where Gone with the Wind was made. Incidentally, with the director of photography of Gone with the Wind, whom we hired for this because uh, it was my theory that, uh, that we should have somebody who had encountered almost every kind of difficulty that one could encounter in filmmaking, and he uh, was no kid, and he had encountered them, if on nothing else, going with the wind uh, some 50 years before. Um, what was his name? His name was Ernest Haller, and he was a marvelous old man. We were in England in uh, 91, 49 years to, to the day, really, from when I set foot on it the first time. And we were at an air museum up in the uh, Midlands. We had 40 artists in the group. And we were in the museum all morning and came out afterwards and they were having a classic car event. There must have been 200 antique and classic cars there on a nice summer afternoon. And uh, got in the bus and the driver couldn't start it. He had run the batteries down using the telephone. So we spent all afternoon of that summer afternoon sitting around in the grass and somebody said something about Star Trek and for the next two or three hours all I did was sketch the Enterprise and give autographs. And I guess if I had been smart like a baseball player, I could have picked up a few, few bucks on it. I like the show. I, I, it's, uh, as I'm sure any number of people among us at NBC said to Herb from the day he first came in with it, uh, it, it was not the kind of show, sci-fi I guess to use a, a, you know, a, an overly broad term, that a lot of us catered to. Uh, so, so in my case, what I liked about it was it was a show in an area I normally wouldn't have appreciated, but done so well that I did I did like it. And and one of the reasons I, I have referred to before, and it had to do with this cozy family womb-like thing that I that I have called it, uh, the, where they were all together, couldn't be untogether, uh, went wherever they went together. Uh, and 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 had to, you know, learn how to deal with each other, at lo as a family does. I thought that was, that was a, a strength of the show. It's a strange thing because I, you know, a, 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 one of my closest and earliest friends in the business, m wonderful man named Herbert Winfield Spencer, who was one of the great arrangers at Fox, in the great days of the Fox musicals in the 30s and 40s, just looked at me one day and he said, you know, he said you've had quite a checkered career. So, and he, it's true. I mean, I've done so many different things in so many different ways, and I've done so many musicals. I've done a few large pictures scoring. I've done a, a few bad small pictures scoring. I've done a huge amount of television. The one thing that I'm known for, apparently, around the world, is the fact that I happen to write the original theme for the original Star Trek series. If I were to be buried, which I don't intend to be, uh, and there were a headstone, which I hope there never is, it would probably say, here lies, what's his name, who directed the pilot of Star Trek. The great thing about it, or the marvelous thing about it, is everywhere I go, with all of the credits that I carry with me, everything, I'd be too long if I told you all my credits. They all say, Star Trek? You did Star Trek? And if I said, yeah, I'm Jimmy Cormack, I did, oh, you did Piece of the Action. They know the name of the show. They know the show. And they tell me how hysterical it was, how funny it was. I've seen it. It's okay. But they think it's great. And that's Star Trek. It's got its own magic. The countdown to oblivion began with the shooting of the last episode, Turnabout Intruder. Seven dull and uneventful days later, on January 9th, 1969, it was all over. The 79th episode had run one day over schedule and $6,000 over budget. Captain Kirk and the crew of the Enterprise had finally landed, and Star Trek was dismantled. The last episode broadcast on NBC was the last episode shot, Turnabout Intruder. It aired on Tuesday, June 3rd, 1969, 
at 7.30 p.m. And its Nielsen rating was indicative of NBC's displeasure and its audience's defection over the three-year network lifespan. The episode aired on a different night and different time, received a rating of only 8.8. .8. From the premiere of Mantrack to the finale of Turnabout Intruder, despite all the letter-writing campaigns, the marches on and the harassment of the network, after all the petitions and phone calls and everything else, Star Trek's Nielsen ratings had, from birth to death, dropped by well over 50%. And after 79 episodes of joy and sorrow, birthday parties, weddings, and funerals, lifelong friendships and short-lived hostilities, broken dreams, and pride of performance, Star Trek was canceled at the end of its third year. The first prime time adult science fiction color television series would always be looked on as a gallant and expensive effort that failed. Star Trek was consigned to perpetual oblivion in the most distant quadrant of the most distant galaxy, to a place where all unsuccessful series go to die. It would never be heard from again. Or so we thought. <laughs>